Welcome back. Now, the talk of the nation this week is Uganda's education system. Is the system flawed? Where have we gone wrong? And how can we address the challenges that permeate right through primary school to the university level? As always, I'm joined by Businje Kabumba, who is a lecturer at Makere um, University Law School and recently reached another milestone <laughs> in his <laughs> academic <laughs> journey. He will be telling us a little bit about that, you know, <laughs> shortly. Good evening, Businje. Good evening, Ukshana. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Tell us just a little bit about your <laughs> recent milestone well, in your thank you very journey. much um, on tuesday i successfully defended my doctoral thesis on international law and so yeah now almost doctor now yes. almost doctor yes congratulations thank you very doctor. much i, I trust you'll actually get <laughs> we'll, we'll get right into the discussion yes please. a recent survey by the world bank revealed shocking mm -hmm. results 80 percent of teachers sampled in Barra, i believe failed an assessment in English. These were primary school teachers. There cannot be any better indictment than this. What has gone wrong with our education system? Well, Rukshana, I, you know, for a long time, primary education was restricted to few people. It was expensive, um, few public schools and fewer private schools. I think what we're seeing are the birth problems, the teething problems of a system that is trying to find itself. And I think education is one sector where the current government can be credited. Um, the rollout of the UPE system and USC, I think, uh, points are steps in the right direction. Now, they inevitably come with challenges in the sense of handling numbers, handling recruitment of teachers, paying them. But I, I think in terms of equity and in terms of fairness to Uganda's children and our future, the government has to start from somewhere. And even internationally, under the international legal regime, there's the aspect of progressive realization of certain rights. Okay. The right to food, the right to shelter, right to health. These are rights that have resource um, implications and governments that are co resource constrained such as ours must begin by taking certain steps. I personally think it's a, it is a step in the right direction to have children going to school, even if that's under a tree. Okay. You know, so that a little education is better than no education. None at all. Then you work from there. So today we have 80% of teachers failing. That's a very terrible statistic. But um, we start from there, I think, and, and, and resources must be committed, and continually committed to having that number, you know, get better. Uh, but, but for me, as an outsider looking in, I think we must commend uh, progress where it has been achieved and then work together to achieve uh, better results. It's interesting that you bring up the universal primary education and yes. USC. I mean, yeah. as a country, we may just thump that we're closer to achieving the yeah. MDG2, which is yeah. really about... Um, mm -hmm. uh, Mm. ensuring that there is primary education by 2015, which is yeah. just like next yeah. year. Yeah. But we have reports that show mm -hmm. children leaving primary school mm -hmm. and they cannot read, mm -hmm. let alone mm -hmm. do a primary two-level equation. Mm -hmm. Is it too early to be talking about a review or like you say, should mm -hmm. we just let it mm -hmm. pan out and take its natural course? Well, um, I think we should seriously look at what's happening. Um, but not from the perspective of throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Okay. And I think um, one has to start from, a, from the perspective of saying that this was always going to be difficult. It's going to always going to be messy, but it's better to deal with the mess and struggle, even in good faith, even if you fall short, than to say, well, we're going to ignore the majority of Uganda's poor children and then concentrate on having a, a wonderful ex education system that can only be accessed by a few. So I, I really have um, a lot of sympathy for those who are struggling in very difficult conditions to try to make education accessible. So the question of access to education is, is the first one. But the question then of quality and affordability are also very important. That you access education, but what kind of education are you, are you getting, are you giving your children? Um, so for me, really, I, I, I take a longer view to this. Um, eventually, one hopes that with some sort of progressive realization, and of course, this not to say, and, and a number of international tribunals have said, mm -hmm. progressive realization doesn't mean that you move slowly to nowhere. There must okay. be certain measurable indicators by which you get there. You start with a minimum core obligation, say, let them reach school. Then you start from there and build slowly until you work on quality, you work on access, you work on affordability, and you try to get all the things right eventually. And so for, I'm really, really sympathetic to a good faith struggle that's taking place. But definitely then one has, once you have the children at school, one also has to deal with questions about welfare. Are they eating? Do, because Do they, they have books? Precisely, because it's useless for a kid to be at school and be hungry. It affects learning, etc. 
but also the teachers. We cannot expect them to score high on exams when you're not paying them enough for them to have the luxury. Because it's really a luxury of reading and keeping up to date. If the teachers are struggling for a minimum uh, living wage, then there are real challenges. I'll even just from the university perspective, really we're not paid enough for us to be motivated enough in the university setting to be real teachers. At the moment, Rukshanat, I'll tell you is that our universities, I can speak from a career, really are nothing more than glorified secondary schools. Because the emphasis on teaching, you have a class, say the first year class of 350 students and you must mark and grade papers. 350, and 350 students, students in a classroom. students in the classroom. And, that's, and you have to teach two or three courses. So, and that's not even counting the evening students, for instance. Now, at, at the university level, you're supposed to be producing knowledge, both teaching but also researching. True. When will you <coughs> sit down and say, okay, fine, I'm going to put aside this time